Today, let's look at this interesting problem from the 27th International Mathematics Olympiad, hosted in Warsaw, Poland. This question looks simple. D is a positive integer not equal to 5 or 13. And all that we need to do is show that we can find two distinct integers, a and b, in the set 2, 5, 13, d, such that a, b minus 1 is not the perfect square. To prove our assertion, d has to be one of the numbers chosen for a or b. Since if d is not chosen, it is trivial to see that we will get a perfect square. This means that we have to prove that 1 of 2d-1, 5d-1, or 13d-1 is not a perfect square. The setup here is perfect for proof by contradiction. We start by assuming that all 2d-1, 5d-1, and 13d-1 are perfect squares, and show that this assumption necessarily leads to a false result. Let's write 2d-1 equals l square, 5d-1 equals m square, and 13d-1 equals m square. A very important idea, which features in a lot of number theory questions, is that of quadratic residues. Given a number n, we can ask ourselves this question. What are the possible remainders for square numbers upon division by n? For modulo 3, it is clear that we can only have 0 and 1 as quadratic residues. And the same holds for modulo 4. You'll notice that some numbers seem to have a higher proportion of quadratic residues than the others. A particularly striking example is 16. Out of the 16 possible numbers, only 0, 1, 4, and 9 are quadratic residues. In solving number theory problems, for questions which has to do with proving impossibility or showing that no solutions exist for a certain Diophantine equation, we want to go with the number n, whose number of quadratic residues is the fewest, as doing so allows us to put a lot of restriction and constraint on any possible solution. Eventually, these constraints would be so severe that there is no degree of freedom left for a possible solution, and this creates the contradictions we desire. This is also another reason that the technique of quadratic residues works well with proof by contradiction. Now that I provide the motivation for us to investigate modulo 16, let's do so with the question. We know that each of these square numbers must be congruent to 1 of 0, 1, 4, or 9 modulo 16. For 2d minus 1, the restriction is especially severe. We cannot have 2d minus 1 congruent to 0 or 4 modulo 16 because 2d minus 1 is an odd number. So our only options are either 1 or 9 modulo 16. Let's split up into two cases. Suppose that L square is congruent to 1 modulo 16. By dividing by 2 throughout, we see that D must be congruent to 1 modulo 8. If we consider modulo 16, we can have either D to be congruent to 1 modulo 16 or 9 modulo 16. If D is congruent to 1 modulo 16, then 13 D minus 1 is congruent to 12 mod 16, which is not a quadratic residue. So we derive a contradiction here. Okay, now let's suppose D is congruent to 9 modulo 16. But then 5D minus 1 is congruent to 12 modulo 16. And from before, we already know that this is not a quadratic residue. Hence, L square must be congruent to 9 modulo 16 instead. Dividing by 2 throughout, we see that D must be congruent to 5 modulo 8. Again, as in the case above, either D is congruent to 5 modulo 16 or D is congruent to 13 modulo 16. If D is congruent to 5 modulo 16, 5 D minus 1 is congruent to 8 modulo 16. But 8, as we know, is not a quadratic residue. If D is congruent to 13 modulo 16, then 13 D minus 1 is congruent to 8 modulo 16, which is again not a quadratic residue, as we have seen before. Therefore, having ruled out all the possibilities above, we can conclude that no such L, M, and N exist. And so, 2D-1, 5D-1, and 13D-1 cannot all be perfect squares at the same time. Therefore, one of them is not a perfect square, as the question wishes us to prove. 
To recap, we use the idea of quadratic residues to help us tackle a question which would otherwise be quite intractable. Whenever you want to impose constraints on equations with integer roots, always remember that modulo arithmetic is a friend. If you are dealing with squares and cubes, it is even better, as you can narrow your field of search by concentrating on all the possible quadratic and cubic residues modulo a certain convenient number n only. Okay, we have come to the end of the video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then.